Hello and welcome to day three of the solar system notes. All right, remember to pause this video anytime you need to write or go back. Okay, so our unit is the solar system. The topic is the moon. Hopefully you got your headphones on and your speakers turned up. Objectives, day three of four. Today we're going to learn how the moon formed. We're going to also understand how solar and lunar eclipses occur. Okay. And then we're also going to understand the different phases of the moon. So for your quick write, okay, at all times, how much of the moon do you think is always lit up? How much is in darkness? What do you think causes the phases of the moon? We see every day of the month, almost every day of the month, I should say. And how do you think solar eclipses occur? Go ahead and pause this video if you need more time to write. Okay, moon formation. The moon is believed to have formed when our Earth collided with another small planet, a planetesimal called Theia. This happened, though, when the Earth was very, very young at the beginning of the, the formation of the solar system. Okay, so when Theia collided with our young Earth, it ripped off massive chunks of matter or material. And that matter or material... Okay, went around the Earth and accreted or clumped together to form the moon. So these, this material that went around the Earth, okay, these chunks of material clumped or accreted together to form the moon. Okay, and that was how our moon formed. So for your notes, how did the moon form? Okay, make sure you write the question in the answer, read the passage, use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentences here. Record these answer bank words in your answer bank section above. Okay, you need six words by the end of this, uh, by the end of the notes. Okay, all right, go ahead and pause it while you write. Okay, moon eclipses in phases. What's the difference here? Well, the moon shines by reflected sunlight, right? The moon doesn't give off light. The moon appears to glow at night because it's reflecting light from the sun, right? Many people, though, confuse moon phases with eclipses. This is a huge misconception. Okay, a common misconception is that the moon phases are caused by the Earth's shadow. Okay, a, or a lunar eclipse. This is not true, okay? Eclipses are rare and only happen maybe once, if maybe twice a year. Okay, eclipses are rare and are the result of either the moon or the Earth's shadow. The phases of the moon, however, which we see several times a month, almost every evening or so, have nothing to do with the moon or the Earth's shadow. So, here's an animation showing moon phases. Notice, as the moon goes around the Earth, half of the moon is in darkness and half of the moon is lit up. Okay? Well, moon phases are the result of the angle or position of the moon when viewed from Earth. So, we see these different phases because we're looking at either the fully lit up side or the partially lit up side and partially the dark side or the whole dark side. Okay? So the phase depends on how much of the dark side or lit up side of the moon we see. Okay. During a full moon, we see the half side of the moon that's completely lit up. And during a new moon, we see the completely dark side of the moon that's not lit up. Okay. So here's, maybe this will help put things in perspective. Okay. So half of the moon, the side facing the sun is always lit up. So if you're standing here, Okay, you would see your at this night you would see the completely lit up portion side of the moon. So you would say full moon. Okay. Over here, let's say a few nights later you're standing here, you would see a waning gibbous. Okay, you're seeing part of that dark side. And right around the evening time here, when it gets dark, okay, you're here. 
you would see half of the lit up and half of the dark side. So you would see what's called a third quarter phase of the moon. Okay. And here you would see a waning crescent portion of the moon. And finally here you would see a new moon. You wouldn't see any of the lit up portion of the moon. You would see the complete dark side of the moon. Okay. And once again, as you start to make your way around here, you're going to notice during a waxing crescent, more of that lit up side starts to appear again. And then we're back at a first quarter moon where you see half lit up and half darkness. And as we keep going around, we're to a waxing gibbous, almost to a full moon again. Okay. All right. So what causes moon phases for your notes? Okay, write the question. Okay, everything below the question goes in your answer section. Read the sentences. Determine which words best complete the sentences by using your answer bank here. Okay, go ahead and pause it. Okay, so solar and lunar eclipses. During a solar eclipse, whoops, let's go back there. During a solar eclipse, the moon phases passes in between the earth and the sun, and the moon's shadow is cast down on the earth. Okay. During a lunar eclipse, though, the moon passes into the earth's shadow, and the earth is between the moon and the sun. So, here, during a lunar eclipse, the moon is in the earth's shadow. Okay. That is a lunar eclipse. During a solar eclipse, though, what you're seeing is you are in the moon's shadow and the moon is blocking out your view of the sun. Okay. So let's take a little bit more in depth. Look here, a solar eclipse. Let's say you're standing right here. Good old California. Okay. Or wherever. So the moon, as it goes around the earth. Okay. Here's what you see. You see a solar eclipse okay and there you have it a lunar eclipse now notice the moon here goes around the earth into the earth's shadow and what you see here is a lunar eclipse okay so on your notes what's the difference between solar and lunar eclipses remember eclipses are rare these events only happen once maybe twice a year okay solar eclipses are especially rare determine which words go in your answer bank please okay all right here we go go ahead and pause it we're gonna move on all right moon rocks meteorites asteroids and comets well how do we know the the solar system is 4.6 billion years old okay how do we know this well the answer is by moon rocks the Apollo mission, when we went to the moon, we brought back rocks. Okay. And the answer is also from meteorites, asteroids, and comets. The remains of the solar system are still around today. Bits and pieces of space rock are still floating through space. Okay. These rocks, meteorites, asteroids, comets, moon rocks, are really leftover pieces of space rock or debris that never formed a planet. Okay. In fact, the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter are pieces of rock that never formed a planet. Each day, more than 100 tons of meteorites strike the Earth. The ages of these space rocks, we take them in a lab and we can date them. They can tell us their age. And the ages of these space rocks are all an astounding 4.6 billion years old, revealing the age of the solar system. Remember, these are space debris that have been left over since the formation of our solar system. So, last one for today is, how do we know the age of the solar system? Okay, write this down, uh, read the sentence, and determine which word best completes the sentence by using the answer bank. Okay, that should be word number six there, hopefully. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, summarize, please. You remember, you can always do your own, or you can do mine. Um, if you do mind, please do this drawing down here. Okay, there might be a drawing like this or an, excuse me, a diagram like this on the test. 
All right, so go ahead and pause it while you finish up your notes. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time.